Welcome everyone. Kia ora, salamat pagi, namaste, assalamu alaikum, and nehu, konnichiwa, hola. How does that feel for a truly international event? I welcome you all to the first RSC Asia, Australia and conference. We have prepared a map for you to add a pin during the end conference and more details about that soon. I'd like to introduce myself. My name is Paula Andrea Martinez. I am the software project coordinator at the Australian Research Data Commons or ARDC. I'm also the community manager of the Research Software Alliance, RISA. I am the steering committee member of the RSC Australia and New Zealand Association, and I'm the co-chair of this end conference together with Roland Mosbergen. Among other things, I feel privileged to kick off the ceremony and welcome you all to this first of a kind event. As I am based in Australia, I'd like to first acknowledge the traditional custodians of the land upon which I live and I work, the Yagara people and the Turbo people. I wish to pay respects to the uh, elders, past, present and emerging leaders, and I also acknowledge the contemporary Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander community who continue to maintain their identity, their culture, and their indigenous rights. If you want to acknowledge your land, please type that in the chat. As this is the welcoming and introductory slides, I'd like to start with a, a vision and a purpose of this meeting. Why are we running this end conference? Uh, so a group of people decided that it would be a great idea to get together, uh, not only with the Australian New Zealand Association, but also with the emerging RSC Asia Association. And we've defined many things or points as goals that we would like to commit during this end conference and we would like to communicate those to you so in every part of this end conference you remember these goals and try to uh, proactively act on those goals and not just leave them as a uh, as a slide deck <laughs> so the first one is to build a research software engineering community across asia and australia we are emerging. The Australian New Zealand uh, Association has been here for about three to four years. Uh, and the Asia Association has just been funded this year. We also want to create awareness in the community of what is happening. So this is an open floor. It's an opportunity for you to share what is valuable to you, what you're currently doing, what you would like to be doing in the future. So you have this opportunity to discuss with people who are your peers. We are colleagues, we are in the, in, in the same space, we have the same challenges and we want to discuss how to solve them together. We also like to discuss the need for more recognition and clear career paths. This uh, conversation is very important because as an RSC, our career paths are not defined. It's not the same as having a, a lawyer degree or just a computer science degree. We don't know what's coming next. We always need to reinvent, rein, <laughs> reinvent ourselves and, and see other things that we can do in the future. Uh, and that's why we have uh, dedicated the second day to discuss any topics around career progression and career paths. You're welcome to add to those topics and I'll tell you how to do that in a second. Another point is to demonstrate the value of ISCs throughout the end conference. So also this is your opportunity to shine. Uh, there'll be a lot of people from different backgrounds. Uh, so we, we have been investing the time to invite people from students up to managers so that might be your chance to get your next job if you really showcase yourself so use this opportunity try to talk to people use the chat uh, try to get their contact details schedule a zoom meeting later it's not just here in your university or in your city or in your state it's across uh, multiple countries so your opportunities are vast we also underpin this end conference with diversity, equity, and inclusion principles. I am very happy to let you know that it's the first time that I'm organizing an, an conference. 
and I've organized all the conferences before, where we really touch this uh, topic of DEI uh, from the very beginning. We have um, we have a very small budget for this end conference, but with that small small budget in mind, we actually paid someone to help us with accessibility. We have um, we have paid someone to write a report for us to share with our keynotes in in the best way that they can make the slides accessible, that they can communicate their message in an accessible way. And we also try to invite people from different areas, like I mentioned before, not only career wise, but also age, uh, different genders, uh, different backgrounds. So you have here the whole mix, and I'm really proud of that. The uh, sixth point is follow on from discussions brought up to at the NZ RSE conference. So some of you might have heard or might have attended the New Zealand RSE conference. It's been running a few years already. They used to call it the programmers meeting or the coding programmers meeting. <laughs> and now it's an RSE conference and they had a lot of presentations. They have a full program and we wanted to work together in a way that the presentations were the first two days and now it's an open floor for discussion so if there was anything that you learned during that conference maybe or you want to extend please use this space as well to continue that conversation and the last point uh, about why we are running this in conference is we are using this as a springboard for building community in 2023 so as you will imagine, all of the organizing committee are volunteers and we are using our time to bring this to the community, but we won't do this for our lifetime. We want the, the new emerging leaders to come up and to say, this is interesting to me. I'd like to be more involved next year. So remember that we have uh, elections every year to join the RSC Australian New Zealand association as part of the committee and the RSC Asia will also have a similar venue for in interactions and to join that community. Next. So the way that an unconference works is to have a very flexible schedule, but we wanted to form the skeleton. So we actually thought that having an unconference will be much easier until you actually get to do the things that are required to run an unconference. And you will see there's a lot of planification behind. You, you won't imagine the kind of things and ideas that one would like to present to you and the things that actually come to the table. So this moment is just the fruit of all the people that have, have been working around this for the last few months. Um, so what do we have prepared for you? We have scheduled three short keynotes, two are gonna be today, one just after the welcome and one at the end of this day, so at 4.30 AST. And then we have a panel discussion about strategy and policy on the Friday at 1.30 PM. The rest of the end conference, so you'll see all this session uh, times allocated, it's up to you. And I'll let you know how you can fill on those uh, sessions in just a minute. We have an unconference board. An unconference board is uh, physically a place where people can put sticky notes and add their thoughts and the topic they want to discuss or present or learn more about. And then people will have other kind of stickers and will go and add uh, a little dot as a voting and voting for this topic. And then we get together and we separate into different groups of discussions. Also, what we have prepared, we have prepared an amazing group of volunteers that are here ready to greet you and answer any questions you have. So that's why we have selected the first 30 minutes of each day, just to answer your questions, just to be here with a smile, say um, whatever you need, we are here to help you. And you can recognize us because we'll have this background and I'll let you know the names in just a second. And then also we'd like to thank our sponsors. Uh, they're also happy to chat with you. They have selected the times when they when you can reach out to them to learn more about them. Uh, and those times are also from 12.30 to 1 every day and also during the breaks. So please go to the expo and find the booth and find the representative you want to speak with. Next. 
and conference. So this is the new world, I think, for many of us. Um, if you've joined an unconference before, uh, try to erase what you've seen. This is a new thing. And unconference is always a new thing. It doesn't matter if you've done this many times. It's going to be a different feeling every time you run an unconference or you're participating from an unconference. So I'm going to read a bit of a definition first so we all <laughs> know what to expect. An unconference is an event trend that has become rather common in the last decade. It's meeting of peers to facilitate learning. That's why we want to do it. Um, it's run by the attendees and it's for their benefit. So whenever you feel that you're gaining something, that's what we wanted to have. If you feel, oh, this session is not for me, feel free to move to another session. It's up to you. We want the best out of you and really do what is interesting to you. While we can guide you, everything is pretty much in your interest. It uses a small discussion groups where all attendees are given an opportunity to choose the topics they want to discuss. The idea here is that the sum of the expertise of the people in the audience is greater than the sum of the expertise of the people on stage. So it's not a place where we're just gonna talk to you. So the first 30 minutes, yes, because I need to give you some instructions, but after that, uh, raise your hand, facilitate sessions, uh, say, hey, I have a cool idea, who wants to join me here and, and go and do your own thing. How are we going to facilitate this? So we have an itinerary, so it's in a schedule. You'll see in the Zoom event platform uh, that you'll see you'll, uh, in the sessions tab, there are different sessions and they are not too long. So it's a maximum of one hour per session and you'll have uh, the time to arrange that hour as you wish. We have an unconference board for people to propose topics. I mentioned this before, and we have um, created this board in a virtual world, and we're using Padlet for that. And um, the Padlet link will be shared later on, so you don't have to worry about that now. But if you were curious and you read all the instructions, they were also sent by email. Then we have four unconference sessions, and we have one today, two tomorrow, and one on Friday. Those unconference sessions are not labeled, they're just called session one, session two, session three, and actionable items for the last session. Uh, where, what's gonna happen in those sessions is that we will go to the Padlet, we will put our thumbs up in points that we want to discuss, and then the topics that are um, have more votes will go into a different breakout room. So we'll all be on the same meeting like we are now, and they will separate into breakout rooms once we decided which topics are most voted. Remember that um, for each of the group sessions that we will have, please try to uh, collect three takeaways of each of the topics. We, was, we would like to share that with everyone else. There are some topics that are very interesting and we would like to split ourselves and be part of two different groups, but we can't do it. Uh, so it's important that you write the, the takeaways so other people who were not able to join your session can see that after. Uh, feel free to add your name if you want so people can connect with you and continue the conversation if they feel like they can. Okay. Tips, how to make this. So the previous point was just uh, talking to you about the virtual board. This is going to be reiterated again, because I know not everyone is here at the moment and people will be joining in and out of the sessions. So we'll have to explain this again. Um, there's a few things that I'd like to um, let you know. When you suggest a topic, uh, don't be vague, as in, I want to talk about career progression. This is nothing really for people to vote on. But if you say, I've been sending 10 different emails and I haven't got one interview, or I have been sending 100 applications and I haven't got one interview, that will give you a lot more uh, interest in discussing, for example. So give a little bit of description around the topic, uh, have some feelings around the topic so people are feeling that yes, they want to discuss this. Um, don't be scared to pick 
tough topics. There might be topics that you don't know nothing about, but the idea is that you want to learn more. And because we have invited a lot of people who have different expertise, there'll be someone who might be able to help you. So uh, ask away and take the take the time to really find what you want to learn. Number three, take advantage of this unique expertise, uh, unique opportunity, because some people might have a lot of expertise in things they never talk about because they might think, oh, nobody really wants to know about the technical stuff, but I work on that 20 hours a day. <laughs> but here is the right crowd. <laughs> Here's people who really want to talk about technical stuff. Here's the people who really want to talk about how to deal with your manager, uh, how to change your job, how to change your career. Maybe there's people who've been doing bioinformatics for five years and then they decided that's not for them. <laughs> So it can happen. <laughs> then number four, most important, relax and have fun. So again, this is an open space. Uh, do what you like to do. If you have an idea, raise it up, be friendly with each other. And I'll talk a bit more about that. And remember, we are setting the tone. So if you have uh, the interest in being facilitator, let people know they can reach to you. So you can even talk during the breaks. Hey, I want to vote for this topic. Let's go and make this topic work. <laughs> and a lot of people will, will vote for that. And also, uh, don't get bumped if only two people show up. Maybe there's only two, but they are, they are the interested ones. So if there's a hundred people in your uh, breakout room, maybe not, not everyone will have the time to discuss. But if you're only two, maybe you can get into a deeper conversation. So uh, that's also good. A minimum of two people, a maximum of as many people as you can handle. <laughs> Next. Some basic patterns. So the main one is a group discussion when there's a facilitator and then someone who's leading uh, the conversation. Please, if you are a facilitator, make sure that everyone has the time and space to talk. Uh, some people will not want to speak aloud like I'm doing now. Some people will like to interact via the chat. So please allow for those interactions to happen. Make sure that everyone is saying what they think, even if it's a uh, yes, I've been in, in that position or I don't know anything about this topic and I'm happy to listen. So attend to those people as well, ask them questions. Uh, show and tell is another type um, of um, session patterns where someone has, hey, I have this cool demo I'd like to share with you. It's about blah, blah, blah. Uh, I'll take five minutes and then somebody else can jump with another demo, for example, or, or I have this uh, bug in my code that I've been trying to solve for the last 15 hours. Can someone please look at my code? That's also good. And then the other type of session is learn how to do X. Like I've been trying to configure my GitHub actions. Can someone help me with that? And you can make a group out, out of that. If there's something new to share ideas, so I've just been thinking that my institution should have an RC chapter, for example, do you want to talk about that? Please do that. And then the session pattern that as organizers we have used is the keynote. So we have invited specific people to do presentations that will fuel the session conversation. So these uh, two keynotes for today are early career. And they will talk about what they've learned, what they want to know. And tomorrow, it's more about career progression. And on Friday, it's more about strategy and policy. So we have invited different people with different overviews. And, and you can also take that and continue the conversation after that. OK, I'm good on time. So let's go a bit slower here. Um, the code of conduct. Designating a code of conduct is a step further in establishing a more welcoming space for our community members. And I noticed that code of conduct um, gets mentioned in a lot of events, but then we don't re really touch upon them. I recently had a code of conduct uh, incident, so I am spending a bit more time in the code of conduct and explaining you why is this. Our core of conduct is a reflection of our core values. One of our values is that all contributions are valued, uh, contributions by individuals and by entities, as long as they co their contributions adhere to the code of conduct. 
And the second core value is that we want to be inclusive with all. This is the first event that we are running across different nations. So be mindful of that. People have different perspectives. People have different tones of talking to each other. So be really, really mindful. We advocate for inclusivity. We welcome and, and extend empathy and kindness to everyone. So it doesn't matter if you speak another language. It doesn't matter if your tone is higher than my tone be kind with each other. And this will leverage contributions from all community members, regardless of their identity or their expression. I'd like to point to you that we have two contacts. So my name is Paula, and we also have Roland, our emails are on the screen. We are the Code of Conduct Facilitators. This is to empower attendees by creating an accessible reporting mechanism for this community event. So we don't expect anything bad to happen, but we want you to be uh, very open to raise any incidents to us in private, and we will attend to those as soon as possible. Um, speaking aloud about who the contacts are is a trusted mechanism because we are creating a secure space for our members. If you know who to reach, then you are more likely to reach out to them. I want you all to be aware of occurrences of even microaggressions. So we don't know each other. We're just getting to know each other. For some people, some things are more aggressive than other things, please be mindful with your comments. They, they still can count as misconduct. Oosh. And I moved my slides. As misconduct or be offensive behaviors. We don't want them to occur, but if they occur, please uh, let us know and we will support you. Everyone has the link to the code of conduct. It's been sent via the instruction emails. And also on our website, there is a link to the code of conduct. So go to the rcaunz.org and find the code of conduct. Next, uh, we are on social media and we are trying to use Twitter as much as possible. It would be great if you can tweet for us as well during the end conference. The hashtag is rcaa. So tweet now, tweet later, tweet anytime and share anything that you would like to share with others. Going to my latest slides, we have special thanks to give to our key partners for supporting this unconference. Our key partner is ARDC, the Australian Research Data Commons, and QCIF, the Queensland Cyber Infrastructure Foundation. And also we have some, uh, we have an accessibility partner, is the Society for Research Software Engineering in the UK. If you are a recipient of our accessibility grants, it's thanks to them. And they'll also like you to let them know how this accessibility grant has uh, helped your involvement in the UN conference. We also like to thank our ally partners, the NCI Australia, and also Google Cloud. Feel free to connect with them. You'll find their details in the sponsors tab. Um, last but not least, I invite each panel, mem uh, each committee member to wave so people can recognize you. And I want to truly recognize uh, the great efforts that all of us have made in the last few months to bring this and conference to you. And, and we are Saranjit Kahur, uh, Michael Ling, my name is Paula, I'm the co-chair with Roland, uh, Pradeep, and Simon. So you see, it's a very small group to host a really big event. <laughs> uh, special thanks also to Mark Crow for all the support that he has shown us as a sponsor. He is not part of the organizing committee, but I feel that he's answered as many emails as we have as well. And he's the only one who... You might not be aware of all codes RCAA 00, RCAA 037, that all the committee members know what they mean, but he's still been uh, all supportive and we are very grateful for his support. Okay, that's all for me. And I'd like to thank everyone again for being here. Uh, you can stop the recording now. Mm -hmm. And I can stop sharing my screen.